but probably few understand Velikovsky's basic theory on which his many other ideas rest. An astronomer who's made a special study of it is Dr. Archie Roy. This is the solar system prior to the cataclysmic events that Velikovsky says took place. Here we have the orbit of the Earth with its moon moving round it. Inside this orbit was the orbit of the planet Mars. Outside this orbit, there is the orbit of the giant planet Jupiter. Note, no planet Venus. Note, Mars is inside the Earth's orbit. Velikovsky believes that about 1500 BC, Jupiter erupted, giving birth to what became the planet Venus. The planet Venus, in this runaway orbit, passed by the Earth, disturbing the Moon and the Earth, causing great cataclysms on the Earth. Then, some hundreds of years later, made a close pass by the planet Mars, disturbing Mars in its orbit, and sending Mars out to make another close pass with further cataclysms by the planet Earth. Subsequently, at about 750 BC, Venus settled down in its nice circular orbit round the Sun, and Mars settled down in its present elliptic orbit outside the orbit of the Earth. And what's the view of orthodox science about this theory? Totally skeptical, but not antagonistic. I think that he is wrong, but at the very least he is magnificently wrong. And I admire the tremendous amount of work that he has put into delving among the evidence and assembling it into this tremendous epic. Now, let me just make a, a statement. And I have um, delved into this as well. And Velikovsky used eyewitness accounts. He went back to papyruses and to all, uh, all of the documents that were recorded, not in just in the Bible, not just in uh, Egypt, uh, China, South America, all around the world. So it wasn't just his theory, it wasn't just some idea that he came up with. This was eyewitness testimony. This was written down by people that saw these things happening. And, and we have discounted this, and then they went ahead and just destroyed him after that and though he was correct and he has been proven correct 60 different things that he said have have um or, or at least 32 different points have been proven even at this time and this is back in the early 70s i believe or late 60s so it's been it's just been covered up is really the fact of the matter all right remember what velikowski said now he said that that Venus erupted from Jupiter, or was born, literally born, from Jupiter 3,500 years ago. Exodus happened in 1446 BC, they say. Now, close enough, that's 3,500 years ago. So, those two events occurred at the same time. Alright, so let's agree, I, 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 that's what I'm going to say, and that's what history appears to tell us. So now I want to show you something else. All right, this is a, a pretty interesting article here about the biblical manna. And I think everybody's hopefully heard of the manna that fell down and fed the Israelites on their um, exodus. And it was literally, um, they called it the, the milk and the honey, and it was the, um, it was the bread of life that sustained them while they were in the desert. And we're going to expound on that a little deeper. All right, this is exactly what the Bible describes, is round little pellets like those the size of coriander seeds. And I want to show you something else. All right, this is what one of the books of the Bible says, that this, um, these pellets had the appearance of this particular uh, bedlium or something it's called. All right, the book of Numbers says that the manna arrived during the night, not during the day, during the night, so remember that. And it all, now let's go on with the, what they say in the Bible about this, because these, this is what fed the Israelites as they were escaping, and they were in the desert. Now, 
uh, numbers describes as having the appearance of this beryllium, which I, I showed you a minute ago, uh, which uh, adding that the Israelites ground it and pound it into cakes, which were then baked, resulting in something that tasted like cakes baked with oil. Exodus states the raw manna tasted like wafers that had been made with honey. It was the milk and the honey, and it would actually melt to form honey in the in the the heat of the sun and it would go into the water and it would melt in the water and actually become milk so remember those two things this is all this stuff is adding up to a uh, end of a story here now uh, the Israelites were instructed to eat only the manna they had gathered for that day stored manna bread worms and stank remember that stored manna bread worms and stank all right, all this is a case I'm building. The other thing about the eating the uh, manna the same day and don't don't save it. You ever see what happens to milk when it gets spoiled? It is nasty. All right, we all know that babies are born and and begin to drink milk immediately when they're born, the mother's milk. Well, what else happens is that placenta at the moment of birth, literally at the moment of birth, it starts to produce prodigious amounts of, of milky lactogenic proteins, I believe they call them, which is literally milky substances that the baby is being introduced to as he is being, or she is being born. Now, that placenta is loaded with these milky substances, all right? And milky substances fell atomized into little tiny particles only during the night during the day not during the day and I would say that if there was a placenta in space coming around and falling on earth the, the atomization coming through the earth's atmosphere would turn them into little droplets and particles similar to what was seen but during the day, the intensity of the sun and the radiation of the the the, the radiation and, and the heating of the upper atmosphere would they, they would just evaporate, and during the night they may escape through and land as um, as manna. So I'm going to look for no. Well, let's put it this way: if you could come up with any other reason that anything could fall through space and land on Earth with those circumstances at night in pellets of milk for any other reason I'd like to know about it. All right, let's cut right to the chase. Exodus happened 3,500 years ago. Venus was born 3,500 years from Jupiter as a comet and a star and is seen and it caused all these calamities on Earth. Now listen to this, what it says here in the Bible. This is Revelations 12, the woman and the dragon. A great sign appeared in heaven, and a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of twelve stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on its heads. Its tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman and was about to give birth so that it might devour her child the moment it was born. Now listen to this now. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into the wilderness to, play, to, to a place prepared for her by God where she might take place, take care for 1260 days. Now listen, this is the important part here. Exodus happened 3,500 years ago. Venus was born 3,500 years ago. Somebody was standing on the sun or the moon 3,500 years ago, giving birth in space, and, and that creates afterbirth and afterbirth creates a placenta and a placenta creates exactly what happened 3500 years ago so that's all i can say i'm just going by what i see now i i look for signs and symbols and and, and so forth and, and matter 
and chemistry and I see every single one of those things and they all add up to the exact same thing that this is a fact this hat now I find this is extremely interesting is that Jesus said I am the living bread that came down from heaven if anyone eats of this bread he will live forever and this bread which I will give for the life of the world is my flesh and he said it in other places I like, truly 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 I tell you this was me that fell down from heaven and fed the Israelites in the desert he says this over and over and they thought he was crazy and obviously but he wasn't crazy he was telling what happened the manna that fell from heaven was his literal original body all right if you want more uh, uh, on this go to mud fossil university on youtube and it's free there's no charge there's all kinds of videos up here for you to look at and they talk about everything from physics which is totally misunderstood to geology which is totally misunderstood to life which is totally misunderstood to rocks and minerals and the deep earth and virtually everything go in there you make your own opinions and here you can come you can say oh no no you're an idiot and I, I guess that's okay just try to be respectful don't call me an idiot if you could please not do that and, and don't speak anything nasty about my mother and any of that stuff. Just say, here's my feeling, and address the videos that I present. Because these are uh, these are factual videos. There's nothing here that's just opinions. No, I have no opinions about anything. All I do is I look at stuff, and I look at the chemistry, I look at the factual information, I look at the history, and, and I look at the text, and I see if anything makes sense, and when it does, I report it. That's all.